Well, join me as they do every Tuesday night, International Issues. Sky News contributor Kosha Garda coming to us, of course, from San Francisco, which makes her very international tonight, and former Labor MP Michael Danby. Well, Michael, let's start with the government's extraordinary probe. I mean, we talked about this last night. I don't think there is a precedent like this that we are going to mistrust, distrust the Israeli government. We're going to do our own investigation into the airstrike that killed the seven aid workers, including one Australian. Reports today that experts say this could open the door for other countries to demand the same sort of access to our own military inquiries. And you and I both know in the past Australian soldiers have been caught up in the alleged deaths of civilians in places like Afghanistan. I mean, this is a big risk, isn't it? Yes, Peter, this is... Uh... Uh, Wong and Albo have opened us up to uh, the 29 investigations that haven't been completed, uh, war crimes investigations against Australian soldiers. But, of course, other democracies won't interfere in Australia. They won't, they won't be posturing, and uh, I, I doubt if any country will follow the precedent set by them. Uh, Peter, I have to congratulate uh, the ABC 730 for the rudest interview I've ever seen them do with the IDF's... Um, um, spokesman Peter Lerner, uh, which was directly on this. But he did say something interesting while being patient and uh, enduring that interrogation. He said that the Israeli uh, military judge advocate general is going to launch uh, investigations into whether there should be criminal charges against the two officers who were speedily dismissed for fo failing to follow standard operating procedures that led to the uh, tragic deaths of those world, uh, food kitchen workers. Kosha, a two-part question for you. I mean, there's all this talk that the, the um, support for Israel is really waning in the states on both sides of the aisle. But also, um, I'm picking up from people I know over there that abortion is really ramping up as an issue in the campaign. You're in San Francisco. How are you seeing it play out? So on the Israeli issue, um, it's really interesting. I was looking into this. Gallup actually has been running the most comprehensive poll since the 1990s on Americans' views on Netanyahu, since he first came into office then, as well as on the issue in the region more broadly. And it's really quite remarkable because while right now we're sort of in this hotbed and uh, tensions are running high and there's a, it's a very divided country on this issue, it's actually really interesting if you zoom back that there's been this tectonic plate shift where there's almost been a 10-point point swing uh, among the electorate in terms of how they support or how much sympathetic sympathy they feel for Israel versus the Palestinian side of that conflict in that region. And uh, the group that's most stalwart in supporting Israel is actually the baby boomer Republicans. And as they are aging out of the electorate, it's a very tricky situation where a lot of the Democrats that are younger and our fresh immigrants are not as sympathetic to Israel as Americans typically have been. And I think that's what the Democrat Party is grappling with. There's almost a civil war going on within their base, and that's spilling out from time to time in the election. On the abortion piece, um, look, it's been one of the most winning issues for Democrats, historically always. And the overturning of Roe v. Wade definitely has galvanized and mobilized that group. 60% of women typically vote Democrat versus 40 percent Republican. And for them, this is a big issue. A lot of them consider this a, a single voter issue. It's most important issue for them compared to everything else. Um, and Republicans are countering it by saying, well, all Roe v. Wade's overturning did is send power back to the states. In states like California, where I'm sitting right now, they've actually expanded abortion rights. In states like Alabama, they really, really restricted it. And that is actually not playing well. Even Republican women in those states uh, are not happy with how far the pendulum has swung. And so I think it actually is going to cost the Republicans some seats in the Senate and the House, just based on how they're out, a little bit out of step with where their base is on that issue. Of course, if people don't like it, they can vote out their various state governments and have those changes made. And then I think that's the point that the Supreme Court was making, pushing it back to being a state legislative issue. And Michael, I am often asked this question. Why aren't neighbouring Muslim countries doing more and taking more citizens out of Gaza? Well, Egypt fears Hamas... Uh practically more than anything. They're an arm of the Muslim Brotherhood. And remember, the Muslim Brotherhood nearly took over Egypt. Palestinian Sunni uh, Arabs constitute 70% of Jordan, uh, the state that was uh, that is next to Israel. And the Jordanian government fears uh, them taking over uh, that country as well. Some people say that would be a good solution if you wanted to have a Palestinian state, have it in Jordan where they already constitute 70% of the population rather than create a new place. But Kuwait kicked them out, um, the Palestinians, um, after the uh, 
uh, Iraq invasion because they sided with uh, Saddam Hussein. So um, they have a controversial reputation and particularly the Hamas Muslim Brotherhood angle is what scares Egypt. Right, we'll leave it there. Michael Damby, thank you. Well, enjoy San Francisco as much as you can there. Kosha, I'll be interested for your reflections when you get home.